Hello, and welcome to The Rob Burgess Show. I'm, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 184th episode, our returning guest is Ash Burgess. You first heard Ash Burgess on episodes 16, 26, 27, 39, 58, 63, 77, 86, 91, 100, 124, 130, 136, 142, 143, 148, 151, 154, 165, 176, and episode 82, which also featured fellow regular guest Jonathan Fowler of the podcast. Ash Burgess has a dusty degree in religious studies and an appetite for both high and low culture. She strives to celebrate the best of every season with her young children. And now on to the show. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm excited to be here doing another seasonal episode. Yes, it is the day after Christmas. It is. It's, I'm so confused. Like, the last couple days have been so long, I almost thought it was two days after Christmas. But mm. It's just been a very long couple days. Long yes. in a good way. But mm-hmm. It's just still long. Definitely. It's been a whirlwind, but... I mean, I think this is, in a lot of ways, I mean... I know this has been a stressful Christmas for a lot of people, overarchingly. But I think for us personally, this has been one of our better Christmases in some ways. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's obviously, you know, tinged with sadness in that we're not able to see our families. Mm-hmm. But as far as the ages of our kids and everyone being able to kind of take part in the celebration and enjoy things, I think for our kind of family dynamic, this has been one of our better years so far. Yeah. I feel like Lilac has really enjoyed her first Christmas. Well, that's the thing is that we've obviously, this is the third time that we've done a baby's first Christmas, Mm -hmm. but this is the first time that I feel like the baby in question has actually really taken part in and enjoyed it. And maybe partially because she's the oldest first Christmas baby that we've had. You know, she was born slightly earlier in the year Mm -hmm. than either of the other two. So she is a little older and more interactive. Like, she's not really a newborn. She's more of, like, a medium-sized baby. So she really loves to play with toys and stuff. She's also just a very playful kind of a baby, too. Very just, true. Just temperament-wise. She's just very sunny, very playful. Mm-hmm. And so I think she's really just, like, up for the party, you know? Mm-hmm. Most definitely. But uh, I wanted to do this because you, you take a lot of pride in and time in preparation with gifts, especially for our children, and you you think some things are going to work a certain way, and 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 sometimes they exceed your expectations, and then sometimes they they come they come up short. <laughs> I feel like we experienced both this year. To to a certain extent, <laughs> I wouldn't say I've been surprised by anything, other than there. Sometimes you take a little bit of a gamble, and you think you know how something's going to go, and you. Because I'm I'm an I'm an overthinker, so I tend to imagine every possible scenario. Mm-hmm. But I usually kind of have a bet as far as how I think things are going to go, mm-hmm. and then you know sometimes things will go better than I expect, and sometimes things will go worse than I feared, and that's definitely happened. But to, to give a little I'll give a little context to kind of back it up to what you were saying, I'm I guess the primary shopper as far as like gifts for our kids, like. You like to take part in choosing the gifts, but it's more... I think I put a lot of time into thinking of what items to get, and I kind of have a plan in my mind about how I'm shopping and what sort of categories I'm trying to fill and all that, and I usually start shopping... Like, honestly, I start shopping years in advance, Mm -hmm. which I definitely don't think is how you operate. (laughs) No. I mean, and what I mean by shopping years in advance is that, like, some of the things that we got this Christmas... I've been eyeing since last Christmas. Mm -hmm. Because Christmas, leading up to Christmas, is when I do most of my shopping. Mm -hmm. While I'm doing my Christmas shopping, I'm making kind of a big master list of ideas. When I first start to gather ideas, I'm making a big master list of ideas. And this is something that I'll add to throughout the year. But I'm really, like, going hard leading up to Christmas with my master list of ideas for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some of those ideas I end up using for Christmas. Some of those ideas I end up giving to other people, and then other people either use them or don't. And some ideas I hold over, either because I still like the idea, but we just went with something else, or I like the idea, but I think maybe next year someone will be more ready for the idea, or I like the idea, but I think it would work better for a different season. Mm -hmm. Like, if I see particularly Easter-y looking thing, Unless there's a reason why we need to give that for Christmas, I'll try to hold that for Easter. 
whether an Easter egg could be just it fits in the Easter basket or it, or particularly things that are pastel or things that are, can be used outdoors, things that are rabbit themed, things that are egg themed, things that have carrots with them. Just anything that says Easter to me, I'm putting on the Easter list, so I'm holding that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same for, you know, Christmas with when I'm looking for Easter things, I'll see things that would go in an Easter basket, but I think maybe would be more of a stocking stuffer, and so then I'll hold those over for Christmas. Fine. But anyway, so yeah, I'm doing the bulk of my shopping at this point in the, in the year, kind of in the fall, leading into Christmas, is when I'm really, like, hammering it out. What should we get? And so, <laughs> I'm just, I'm laughing because I'm wondering, how much range does your thing pick up? Like, can they hear children singing who are supposed to be in bed from I'm the next sure, room? I'm sure or? they can. It's okay, it's... Kids, the kids have been on a higher level for the last few days. So. Yes, I mean, there's a lot has happened. But Bedti- bedtimes have been interesting. Yes. But um, anyway, so, so yeah, I, I do most of the heavy lifting as far as thinking about what to get them for mm-hmm. things. And I'm also, I enjoy that shopping. Like, I enjoy giving kids presents, and I enjoy... Like, I really like toys, mm-hmm. so that's fun for me, like, looking at kids' stuff. It's a, I, I like giving gifts to older people, too, but it's harder, I feel like, because once you're older, it's just kind of about what would be fun or useful to you, but there's not as many delightful items that you can give to older people, and everything is so much more expensive for older people, too. It's... It's easier to spoil your kids because you can get a lot, you know, you can get a lot for your dollar sometimes. Some, some, some children's things are surprisingly expensive, but not really compared to things that will be equally appreciated by an adult. True. Um, I am often disappointed by the craftsmanship of children's items, however. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a wide range of craftsmanship. I actually am pretty good as far as I understand what craftsmanship level most things are going to be at. Mm. And I tend to try to go for things that are of a certain level of craftsmanship. The problem is, I also want our children to be happy. And there are certain things that they desire. And the older they get, the more that they are desiring things and seeing things and wanting things. That are maybe not going to be the level of craftsmanship I would steer towards. So I would say I've I've tried to kind of come to a happy midpoint as mm-hmm. far as... The majority of our money and the more expensive things that we've gotten, for the most part, I've tried to go for things that I knew were going to be good quality. Because they're just, you know, I read a lot of reviews, I look at things closely, so so we're going for things that are just known to be decent quality items and that have been around for a while and, you know, things that I think are going to hold up well that I, you know, I have, I have backing for my thought that this is going to be good. But... This year, more than ever, I've mixed in a few things that were of questionable quality because I knew that, you know, because they were things that the children wanted. And I think I even let go a little bit more this year than I have some other years. I've I've always had times when I've shifted into, like, a few items that were, like, mm-hmm. you know, things that kids wanted or that would be super fun. And I do also want our kids to have an anchor point in the times that they're in. So I think it's nice for people to have a commonality where there's, like, certain popular toys that everyone of the certain age experienced. Mm-hmm. And I do like for our kids to kind of have that touchstone so that, you know, as they age, they'll have that in common with, you know, their peers of certain things that it's like, oh, yeah, we all remember the that or the this or, you know. So I think that that's kind of a fun thing for people to have. So yeah. so I've tried to do a little bit of that. So mostly quality and then a few of those, you know, very popular or want very wanted by the child items, even when I'm knowing that, you know, this is not, this is not how I want to spend my money or throw my money away. But, but it's like, but this year, while I did mostly go for quality items this year, I also went for a few things more than ever, I think, that were a little bit more just purely for delight and not necessarily based on quality or play value. Because I look for mostly, you know, open-ended play type of things, and there's some things that are definitely not like that. I think I did more this year in the other direction somewhat because of the current times that we're in. Mm-hmm. I feel like not that buying material items for our kids can make up for different weirdnesses of, you know, current times, but they've lost a lot this year as far as, you know, 
They, mm-hmm. They're missing our extended family, and they're missing all the activities that we used to enjoy together out in the world. And they're missing all the activities that we had told them that they were going to get to do this year, like, you know, sports and classes and crafts and time with old friends and opportunities to make new friends. All of that has kind of been taken away from them. So, mm-hmm. obviously... Buying elaborate animatronic toys in no way makes up for that, but you know, I feel like I can, you know, it, it still felt like if you're, if there's a year to like go for more things just for fun, just so that they could experience a moment of joy and wonder, you know, it feels like the time for that if you're able to. That makes sense. But we have, uh, we have three kids just for people that are just tuning in six, three, and eight months tomorrow, which is crazy, but, um, you had you had different kind of like you said categories that you're looking for for each of them, but um, well, let's let's talk a little bit about the categories because there's a lot of um, there are a lot of popular ways just that people people a lot of people like to structure how they give Christmas gifts to their kids, okay. and I've studied gift giving a lot. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I've sort of done my own like minor class in gift giving over the years, just because I'm interested. In, I'm not only am I interested in buying toys for our kids and presents, but I also am very interested in how other families structure gifts for holidays and Easter basketry and giving Christmas presents and all that. So there's a couple of popular kind of standard ways to give gifts for kids. One of them is, I believe it's the four gift rule. And then people will sometimes follow it very strictly and other times people will modify it. But the idea of the four gifts is that it's, Something they want, Mm -hmm. something they need, something to wear, and something to read. Mm -hmm. And some people are, you know, really strict. Like, it's literally, like, one piece of clothing, one book, one item they ask for, and one thing that they need, like, hardcore need, like a toothbrush. And other people, so that's, like, on one end of the spectrum, like, sticking it real hard to the foregrip rule. Kind of in the middle of that, I've seen people modify it a little bit where it's, like, a few things they need, some clothes, some books, you know, something that they... And, and I've seen people kind of wiggle a little bit, like, oh, they don't need books, but this board game fulfills the book category. And, oh, you know, so I've seen people wiggle a lot, and I've seen people stick to, like, it's literally four items. I've seen people add in an extra category, like something to make or something to do or something to create as, like, an extra category. Or some people will put in, like, a spiritual gift as an extra category. Mm-hmm. And some people, you know, give multiple gifts per category, so it's like they're still giving, like, 20 presents, but it's just like they're kind of hitting those categories. Mm. Then I've seen people follow a three-gift rule, which is more religious-based, and it has to do with the three gifts that the three wise men brought to the baby Jesus. So I think they interpret that as there's the gold and the frankness and the myrrh, so they have one gift that I think the gold then gets transformed into it's that's the kind of something they want. And then another gift is something they need. And then the third gift is like a spiritual gift, like mm-hmm. maybe like an illustrated children's Bible or something. So I've seen people do that kind of a three gift thing. And then there are some people that, I think, you know, are more minimalist, obviously, just as far as they give fewer gifts to their kids. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily they're following a specific rule, but it's just like they want to be more minimalist. And then there's people that are maximalist that are literally like there's, you know, 35 presents per person. And how many gifts can we pack into the room? And, of course, there's like, are you more of a quantity or a quality person? Like, some people are like, how many gifts can we get into this room And, you know, even if 20 of them came from the dollar store, they still want to have 35 presents. Whereas other people are, like, maybe spending the same amount as the person with 35 presents, but they're only getting three gifts, but they're, like, three very high-quality gifts. And I think I fall somewhere in the middle. Like, I try to go for quality, generally over quantity. But I also... But none of our kids' gifts came from the dollar store, so you're definitely tacking more to the... No, I'm... Well, I'm getting there, though, because, I mean, I... You know that I have expensive taste. Mm -hmm. But part of that, too, is because I watch very carefully what our kids actually use. 
and what we, you know, get a lot out of. And I would rather get them things that I know that they're going to get a lot of play value out of and use a lot. And, like, especially as they get older, as I get to know their individual personalities and likes more and more, I really know that there are certain types of items that a kid will play with a lot. And I would rather spend, like, $100 on something that they're going to use every day for hours. Like the play kitchen. Now more than ever, but even before the current situation... We spend a lot of time at home. Mm-hmm. And we have a, a kind of a small space that we live in. So it's important to have the right things that they're really going to use and enjoy a lot. Rather than a lot of clutter that's not really getting used. So I'd rather pay for the right things than things that are not really going to do much for us. But even if we had a room, you probably wouldn't. I mean, you still have kind of like sensibility that says you shouldn't get just a bunch of garbage, right? I mean, even if you had room. Yes, even if you had room. Well, and I've read a lot, too, about how kids play. And kids do play better if they have less toys. Mm-hmm. To a certain extent. Like, I do think it's situational. Like, because we are home all the time, I do think we need slightly more toys than someone that's not home a lot. You know, if, if, you're, if you spend the majority of your time not at home... Then when you have windows of time at home, I would imagine you just want to have a few things that your kids could then gravitate towards and use. We do spend enough time at home that I like to have enough toys that we can rotate some things in and out to keep their interest going. So I think we need more toys than someone who has maybe a different lifestyle than us would need. At the same time, though, we don't want so much that they're overwhelmed and then can't focus on what they're playing with. And I do notice that there's certain, you know, I would rather have, like, a lot of certain things so they have enough to play with Mm -hmm. than not enough. Like, with our play kitchen, for example, we have different foods that we've gotten over the years, like, different play foods. And, like, the the nicer wooden foods, they play with those constantly. We have, at certain points, tried to kind of, I think when we first were getting the play kitchen going, we got some plastic play food. And they never really played with it as much. And eventually I just sort of hid it in the closet and no one missed it. And then I got rid of it. So things like that. It's like, sure, you could get more plastic food for your money. But if no one's really playing with it, then it's not really doing much for you. Mm -hmm. And I do have certain aesthetic sensibilities, too. You know, like I like... And obviously with toys, there's a lot of compromises that have to be made. Especially as they get older and just want certain things. And a lot of toys are just really... Not as attractive as I would like to be. Well, you have a real vendetta against characters. I do, but I've also... I I feel like I always start out kind of hard-hearted with my shopping, and then I soften as we get closer and closer to the date. Like, this year, I started out with, like, some pretty hard-hearted goals. Not hard-hearted, but, like, maybe sort of lofty goals about how I was going to shop. So I think I was feeling like when I started shopping, I had just, you know... I got a bunch of stuff for Easter, and I felt like they had a lot of nice stuff then, and then I had just spent a lot of money getting, like, school supplies and stuff for the kids for, you know, getting, getting, you know, homeschooling going and all that. And when I started, I was like, all right, we're only going with nice wooden educational items this year, and we're going to go, like, three gifts. I was like, three gifts. We're going to do, like, a toy and, like, a book and, like, a record that they can listen to on the record player, and that's totally going to be it. But as much as I sometimes dream about being that minimalistic, I also love that magical feeling of that Christmas morning where the tree is just like a cascade of presents kind of coming out from under the tree. Because that's that's the thing is that I remember as a kid, I don't even remember every present I ever received, but I remember that moment Christmas morning before we're opening the presents when you walk out and it's it's still pretty dark, but the Christmas tree is all lit up, and there's just all these presents under the tree, and it's just, like, feels so magical. And so, of course, I want to create that feeling for our kids. Mm-hmm. You can't do that on three presents each. It's harder. I think it's harder to do. It's not a cascade. No, and, I, and I, yeah, no, I think for a cat to be a cascade, you really have to go be, be, go go bigger. Although I will say, having more kids creates the ability to create a cascade with still less items per person. It's true. Do so, I have some filler in there. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm just saying, with three kids, you still get more under the tree with you know 
you know, so, so many per person, and then if you just had, like, one kid you, and you want to have the same cascade, you're going to have to buy more for the kid. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're kind of, kind of, kind of getting off, off track here, I feel like, but, or maybe not. Maybe we're right on track. <laughs> but, um, so, let's, see, let's start with Cap. Well, starting, do you want, are you wanting, are you wanting to talk about, I know you said you wanted to talk about hits and misses, but do you want to talk any more about just generally how we shop? Or? Oh, sure. What else did you have to say about that that we haven't got to yet? Well, I mean, I guess we were talking about, we kind of talked about how some people have a certain very set, you know, categories that they're filling, and other people go for just as much as possible no matter what it is. And I would say I like to do, I like to feel, I like to get enough presents that it feels kind of like a lot to me. Mm hmm but at the same time, stuff that I think will really add to our home and fit inside of our home. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm a minimal maximalist. Like I want to have as much as possible, but I also am minimalist in the sense that I would choose quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. And I think I put like a lot of thought into each item. Yes. Um, However, I think our children gravitate towards some of the most gaudiest uh well like you were saying character you, well like you were saying i have a thing against characters and i kind of do it's not really within my aesthetic like i don't really love character merchandise like i tend not to get them clothes with characters on them unless sometimes for a present like i would get a christmas present or a birthday present that has their favorite character on it but if i'm just shopping for them because it's like they need clothes for the fall or something my ideal is not to buy clothes that have characters on them. I like things that look like a little nicer, a little more classic. And I also, I have a sort of color palette that I'm working with, like when it comes to clothes. And I mean for our entire home, but obviously toys can't always fit into that. But in general, I have a color palette that I'm working with and I try to get everything to kind of mix and match. Mm -hmm. And a lot of toys do kind of hurt my eyes. Just as far as, like, not going with my aesthetic or fitting with my colors. I'm looking at Baby Yoda right now to go. <laughs> yeah, but, but I soften towards characters when I know that they're a character that the child just, like, when, when someone loves something extremely, that makes me love it. Like, if my kids love something, I will start to be fond of it over time. Like, I've become more and more fond of the Frozen movies. Mm -hmm. Probably because... Emerald loves them so much. And I mean, Cap loved them too. Our oldest loved them when he was younger and he yeah, still likes them. Seem to remember that. Yeah, he so. still likes them. I just think he's moved on to other interests. Mm -hmm. But our three-year-old is deep, deep in Frozen country right now. And But my appreciation for Frozen has grown to the point where I've grown very fond of it too. And the same with Minnie Mouse. She loves Minnie Mouse so much that it's hard not to sometimes be like, oh, Minnie Mouse, you know? Even when the brittle, brittle <laughs> toys come into your house. Well, that is the thing. I haven't bought many Minnie Mouse items because uh -huh. it's not because I'm against Minnie Mouse in theory. You're just against the Chinese sweatshops that they... Well, yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> very bad working conditions and also very poor quality products. Yes, like, it's the bad aura. I mean... Even if something's going to be, like, to my eyes, displeasing, I at least want it to feel like it's going to hold up to my children playing with it and not be like... I don't... What I really... My least, my least favorite thing is when something is such poor quality that it minuses away from my children's enjoyment. Like, if something breaks while my children are trying to play with it because it is poorly constructed... Or while you're trying to open it. Yeah, or just trying to just get it going. Like, the, things like that are what really upset me. But... But anyway, let's talk about, you want to talk about the hits and misses of what we bought our children this year. And sure. as we talk about that, I can talk about, you know, how I shop okay. for them specifically a little sure. bit. So, so yes, let's start with our oldest. So, All right. So our oldest is six years old, mm -hmm. almost six and a half. Yeah. And so I feel, I felt like this year was easier to shop for him than I, it was an easier time shopping for him this year than I've had in years. Mm -hmm. I felt like. When he was a baby, he just, I mean, he wasn't, like, like we talked about, his first Christmas, he didn't really care about toys. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after that, he was really into cars for a while. 
And so, you know, he had certain things he was super into. And that's always how he's been, is that he has certain things that he is really into. And he can play with those things for a lo long periods of time. But he doesn't really have a diversity of interests. Mm -hmm. So he's not like... So I'll often... And I, I felt like the last couple years, like not this year, but I felt like for like Christmas number four and Christmas number five for him, a lot of it was kind of guesswork as far as just us sort of thinking, well, he might be into this or maybe he could come to like this if we try it out. Like a lot of it was felt like it was trying out things to see if he would get into them. So I felt like we hit kind of a weird pocket of time where... His his toddler obsessions had kind of dropped away, and he mm -hmm. hadn't really come into his kind of more, like, kid <clears throat> who he was going to be interest as much. Mm -hmm. But this year, I actually had so much fun shopping for him because he finally, I felt like, is old enough this year that he's starting to get into certain interests that he didn't really have before and developing them more. Like, he's become an artist. Mm -hmm. He spends a lot of time drawing and he loves, you know, drawing and markers and pens and art supplies and all that kind of stuff. And he's finally, over the past, well, it was really, it was last Christmas that he first got his first small Legos. Mm -hmm. And he's, his interest in those has only grown, so he's into those. And there are more toys that are, like, age-appropriately wise. There's a lot of toys that are kind of, he had previously outgrown the toddler toys, but wasn't quite maybe dexterous enough or quite ready for some of the things that now that he's in that kind of early elementary age, there's more stuff available to him, I feel like, that would be like, he could use this and maybe enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So I did have a lot of fun shopping for him this year, although he still, I would say, has limited interest. And I've learned over time that it's generally a waste of money to buy him random things because he won't use them at all. Mm -hmm. But this year... The first thing that I bought for him was a giant Lego set. Mm -hmm. Like the first thing I got him was this really large um, space Lego set that has it has a rocket ship and a mission control center, and there's even some sort of it's like a little like a monorail that goes from mission control to the rocket ship, and there's little robots and all kinds of like a Mars rover. It's like a really cool set. Like I'm excited to play with this, mm -hmm. and that was something that we had thought about for his birthday. And then ended up not getting, but I had still kept it on my list of ideas, and I had slightly regretted maybe not getting it for his birthday, because I, mean, I still thought, oh, he'll like this, because he's really into space, mm -hmm. and he's really into Legos. So to find something that kind of hits into two of his interests seemed like a really good bet for him. So that was the first thing that I bought for him this year. I bought that, like, a while ago, and... I was really happy with that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, and, and he, he, he was very happy. Like, I was really, well, the thing that made me really happy was, and I'm going to stop saying happy over and over and over because I know I've said that like a million times, but the thing that I was excited about was that a few days before Christmas, he saw on the back of one of his Lego booklets a picture of some other Lego sets, including the space set, and he showed it to me, and he was like, I want this Lego set for Christmas, and I was, of course, was like, well, it's too late to add to your wish list, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was secretly super happy because that was like a set that I already had bought him a long time ago and was like all set for Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And then, so that was the two things that he wished for on his Christmas list was the Lego set and then he wished for a Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. Which is sort of interesting how the, he caught wind of Baby Yoda because we don't watch The Mandalorian and he's never seen Star Wars. But I think it's just in the air. You saw a catalog or a... Commercial or I think something. maybe when I was watching a YouTube video, he saw out of the corner of his eye, and then he just knew it was for him. Like, he's been interested in the Star Wars characters prior to this. Like, he's had sort of an interest, like, he would ask us questions about, like, at one point somebody gave him a Lego set that had a Darth Vader in it, and he asked us some questions about Darth Vader and thought that was cool. And he's asked me a lot about Star Wars and who my favorite character is, and I've told him it's Chewbacca, so he'll occasionally ask me questions about Chewbacca. But I'm not, like, super, like, I like Chewbacca, but I'm not actually that into Star Wars. Like, in the, mm -hmm. like, I've not felt the need to see, like, the last, I don't know how many movies, like, there are, like, five movies that have come out since the last one I saw or something. I have no idea. The last one I saw was back when, 
young Darth Vader was getting married to Queen Amidalia or something. So I feel like I've missed a oh, lot. Wow. Th- things have happened. Mm-hmm. Whole Kylo Ren, I don't know who that is. And mm-hmm. There's, I, I look at a lot of the things that, I, that are happening now and I don't recognize the characters at all. But anyway, somehow I know that the Mandalorian has like taken the world by storm. And somehow he... I think sometimes things, just so many people like something at once that people just feel it. Mm-hmm. He just knew it was for him. Yeah, and he just, when he saw Baby Yoda, he just, he knew it was for him. But that was another thing where it combines two of his interests, because he has the interest in space, particularly, and he's interested in Star Wars, and he really likes babies. And I honestly think, like, one of my regrets is that we didn't ever get him, like, a nice, like, a bigger baby doll when he was, like, a toddler. Because I think he would have liked that, like, like the American Girl style, like, bitty baby dolls, like, the ones that um, Emerald has now. I feel like he would have liked one of those when he was mm-hmm. younger. Well, he did have, a, like, a small baby that he still occasionally plays with. Mm-hmm. But he likes babies a lot. I mean, like, he loves his baby sister. Yeah. And so, so to combine, kind of, a baby and Star Wars and space and everything. I thought that was a good bet for him. I was a little bit nervous, though, because I tend to like things that are very open-ended and not particularly animatronic, and it does remind me a little bit of a Furby. And the other thing that we had previously that he did not play with was a Hatchimal, Mm -hmm. which is also like a small animatronic animal that you take care of. And he he actually still asks about the Hatchimal like once every six months. He'll be like, "Hey, let's get the Hatchimal out." And no, I haven't you. actually told him that I got rid of it like three years ago. Yeah. But <laughs> well, but he never played with like he literally like he was very excited. There was one really fun day where it hatched because it you know you get the giant egg and it pecks its way out of the egg. Mm-hmm. And this was another one of those toys where it was the hot toy, and I want him to have the experience plus. It was really unclear what he was interested in in that pocket of time. So we were kind of like, you know, this could be something he would like. And he did love that day when it packed its way out of the egg. Mm -hmm. And then we played with it. And then it just kind of sat in the toy bin for a long time. And I think Emerald was scared of it because it had these kind of glowing eyes that she didn't like. I was scared of it. (laughs) I mean, it was a little pregnant. But anyway, so I was a little bit nervous that this would be, you know, like the Hatchimal where it wasn't played with after the initial excitement. But, first of all, the articulation of this thing is way beyond the Hatchimal. Like, the way that its ears move, I feel like, is lifelike. Mm -hmm. I'm incredibly impressed by this thing. And the sounds that it makes do sound very realistic, like like a baby, but also not creepy. Mm -hmm. Somehow, like, I think they really put a lot of thought into this and made it appealing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm okay with this being in my home and I don't, I'm not, like, afraid that the robot is going to, like, murder us in our sleep or anything. And yeah. and he loves it. I mean, how would you describe how he's been with it? Pure, pure love, pure affection. It's really just, like, he saw it and we, we had him open it first, too. Because he has kind of the temperament where I didn't think he would be able to enjoy his other presence if he was worried the whole time about whether or not... He was going to get this one thing he was wishing for the most. So we thought, okay, we'll just have him open it first so he can know that he has the thing and then everything else is just a bonus on top of that. Not everything else is him being like, he would have been excited, but instead he's just thinking, oh no, this is not, he's he's the kind of person that like, I think if he's afraid that things aren't going to work out, he'll be like, oh no, (laughs) like, just, that's just how he is. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know him. Um, so we had him open it first and he was very happy and he's hardly wanted to put it down since he's played with it all day long for the past two days. And we had to, he wanted to sleep with it, but I was afraid it would break because, you know, if he rolls onto the ear or something and the ear stops working, he would be really upset so he made it a little bed under the Christmas tree, mm-hmm. and it's, like, covered with a blanket. But, I mean, he's been, like, holding it while it sleeps, and, like, playing with it, and talking to it, and rocking it, and he loves it. Yeah, it's a huge hit. Um, let's see, what else did he get? Well, and the other thing that we got him that I think is, like, a big, big hit item for him is his globe. Mm-hmm. It's a, um, it's the leapfrog, it's like a talking globe, so it's one of those globes where there's a stylus and you poke it and then the globe talks, you know, it says where it is, like where it is, like the name of the country, and sometimes 
there's different modes, so it'll tell you, like, about the animals that live there or something. There's a tiny little screen, so it mm-hmm. shows you, I think, a video of, like, landmarks or animals. And supposedly, and I think that's what that cord we were trying to figure out what it was from maybe is supposed to do, you can hook it up to a computer and then download additional mm-hmm. packages, like, if you want information about, like, dinosaurs from around the world or, like, mm-hmm. other stuff. I assume you have to buy the add-ons or whatever. But anyway, it's like an informational talking globe, and... I knew he would like it because we don't let him play with stuff that has screens very much. No. So there's that sort of a novelty factor. Mm-hmm. Additionally, he's really into maps. Mm-hmm. And we've been studying some geography in school this year, and he just loves maps. And he also loves planets and space and stuff, like as we mentioned. So I knew this would be a good bet for him, and he has been playing with a lot. And I think I think he's still getting a hang of how to really use it to get the most out of it as far as... I think he'll poke one place, and then as it's still talking, he'll, like, poke another place, and then, you know. So I think, you know, there's there's a little bit of a learning curve there, but he's definitely, like, getting something out of it, I think. For sure. Yeah, he tried to take it bed, to bed with him tonight, so. He did. He wanted to play with it. Well, I think he realized that it, since it has that screen, that it, he could be using it in the dark, and, like, we had to put Baby Yoda and the globe <laughs> back under the Christmas tree and not let him take them to his room, or he'd be up all night using yeah, those. You're ready to talk about the misses, because... Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the misses for him, and then let's move on to our next child. See, and this is... I just want to say, for me personally, this was devastating that this was a miss, because I was so excited when I was a kid, when I got a light bright. I was just... It was one of my, like, wished for, like... I don't. I won't say it was to the level of him and Baby Yoda, but it was, like... You, you know, wanted that like, light bright. I wanted and you were psyched and to have it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he really couldn't care less about the light bright. But that's how he is with every other. Okay, that's the thing is that other than these things we've just talked about, the Lego set, the globe, the Baby Yoda, those are things that we knew he would like because they combine some of his very strong interests. He's the kind of person that he just likes a few things, and everything else is like nothing to him. And I got the light bright, hoping that he would like it because. He's artistic. Yeah. Like, he likes to draw and make things, and it's kind of an artsy type of thing to, like, put the pegs totally. in to make the picture. He also likes glowing neon things. Like, he has spent a lot of time playing with, like, flashlights and, like, various glow-in-the-dark, like, LOL dolls and stuff that he would take in the bathroom to, like, see them glow and, like, run back out and go back in and, and making, like, shadow puppets and stuff like that. So I thought, based on that, it, like, combines two of his interests. Maybe he would go for it, but no. Okay. Like, he today, after he kind of exhausted, like, Baby Yoda was sleeping, and I think he was just, he was starting to kind of, the other thing that he loves is anything that he wouldn't normally play with, but if someone else has it, he wants it. Yeah. But, oh, I forgot, there was one other hit that we can talk about after we talk about the disappointment of the light bright. But anyway, um, I convinced him to get the light bright out, but he didn't want to use any of the templates. And he made a picture, and then he didn't want us to, like, put batteries in the light bright to, like, see it glowing, and we convinced him to do that because we thought maybe he'd be more excited once he saw that, and then did he even ever actually see it glowing, or no? No. He was just kind of over it. I think, like... Yeah, just for you're whatever like, reason. Oh, Daddy, you're going to wear the right the, the, the batteries out, and it's like, you don't <laughs> care. Like, it's just... Yeah, I think... I'm... I'm going to put that back in the closet and try again Mm -hmm. in, like, a few months. And then if he's not into it, it will probably just, like, pass it on or something. Or, I mean, at that point, I mean, Emerald could almost do it. Yeah. But the one other hit that we should talk about for him, major hit, or and this was an impulse buy. We got him this set. It's five little Batman figurines. Mm. Each one is dressed as Batman from a different period. Mm Mm-hmm. So there's, like, you know, original classic Batman, and there's, like, an exciting rainbow Batman and a couple other Batmans. Mm -hmm. I thought he would like that because he likes doing different versions of things. So I think to see the different versions of Batman, I thought, would be pleasant to him. And he loves Batman. I was a little nervous because previously all of the action figures that we've had have been a total miss like he had like he's been given like the the bigger size like i don't know if they're like 12 inches or 8 inches you know what what is that standard kind of large action figure yeah you know I, like standard action figure size action figures i, I don't know the dimensions but, yeah, but you know what i does that yeah. it's clear what i'm talking mm-hmm. about when i say that yeah sorry i'm not that versed in action figure and apparently i never will be but 
we've been he's been given some of those and they, he just didn't play with them at all and to the point where I what I do when things are not getting played with is that I put them in the closet for a while mm-hmm. and then if no one asks about them in a long enough period of time I just sort of quietly get rid of them I just sort of quietly got rid of them and I don't think anyone has noticed no so yeah so I so I was a, it was a gamble with these Batman because I was like he loves Batman and he loves different versions of things but traditionally action figures haven't gone anywhere for us however i did wonder if they would do more because there are more of them and i think sometimes if i think sometimes when you get one toy as not part of a set and it doesn't go with any of your other toys it's hard to play with Mm -hmm. and so then people never really figure out how to use it so Mm -hmm. i think partially maybe why these batmans are success is that there are multiple ones of them so it's like they can go together yeah That, that makes sense and since he's gotten really into drawing, he's, like, drawing action figures. So I think he's, like, drawing the superheroes and drawing the Batmans. But so anyway, those those are a hit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Light Bright, not a hit. Is there any other not hits for him? Not really. I mean, can you think of anything else that, like, stands out as far as what we got him? I mean, like, pretty much everything else. Like, the markers and the notepad and all yeah. the smaller things. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include in our discussion gifts that, like, we've outsourced that, like, other people, that we chose, but other people got, like, the, um, magnet tiles, I think, are a hit. We already had some, and then we were gifted a larger set, which I wanted for them, because they're always fighting over them, and I thought we finally maybe now had enough that we Unfortunately, we fixed that problem. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I, do you call this a hit or a miss? It's a hit, because they are liked. It's a miss in the sense that I thought, maybe if we get enough of these, they can build more stuff and there won't be so much fighting. Because previously there's been constant fighting. Because it's like one person's trying to build a tower with the three really pointy pieces. And then the other person wants to build a house for their little figurine. And then, you know, they're screaming back and forth. So I thought, okay, now we have like a very large set that was given to him. So we can finally have enough for them to both be building whatever they want. Now they're still fighting. They're just fighting over a, a five-story mansion that the Batman are going to live in separately <laughs> yeah, like, in different instead plots. Of, <laughs> instead of fighting over like a small pointy tower that they can barely jam one figurine in, they're like, you took the third level that was going to be where he had his Rainbow telescope. Batman had it all back. So yeah, the fighting has continued, but I would still... So that's a combination hit-miss. Miss in that it did not solve the problem I hoped it would solve, but hit in that it's going to be enjoyed by him, and also that's a good family toy in that it's going to be enjoyed by the other children also. Yeah. If we can find a way to have them share it without, like, a screaming fight like the one that broke out yesterday. Like, I was, like, on the phone, like, wishing someone a Merry Christmas and I had to, like, hang up on them yesterday because of, like, the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. anyway. But is there anything else with Cap? Um, or do you want to move on to Emerald? No, yeah, let's let's move on to Emerald. So, what do you think the biggest hit for her was? Ooh, the biggest hit for her. It's a hard call because Emerald loves everything. She's very positive. She's, that's just how her personality is, though. Like, she's kind of a like a woman of all trades. Like, like. Well, like, like I was saying before, like, Cap will play with, like, a certain thing that he likes for, like, hours. But then when he gets bored of it, he's kind of, like, bereft. Because he has, like, nothing left to do. And he doesn't want to do anything else. Emerald will just sort of, like, sort of flutter from one thing to the next all day long. Like, she'll play with, like, 50 different toys in a day. But, like, each for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she loved everything. But I would say, big hit-wise, as far as, like, what we picked out for her... So I picked for her, um, as far as the hits go, one of them was, like, the top item on her wish list, which was that she already had one American Girl Buddy Baby that we got her last Christmas that she's been playing with more and more, I feel like, especially since, you know, she has a baby sister now, and she, she got so excited when Lilac was born that she renamed her original baby baby Lilac, so that there would be two Lilacs, and she mm-hmm. likes to, like, when I would be, like, when Lilac was, like, a super newborn and I would be, like, feeding her, Emerald would run over and she would sit and she would want to feed her. And so, she, like, she would want to care for her baby while I'm caring for my baby. And she's, like, very excited about that. And, of course, once you get onto the American Girl mailing list because you've bought products from them, 
they then start sending you these very glossy, very thick catalogs. Sometimes they'll make your daughter scream out her first words. Right? No, Lilac saw... I mean, we were both there, so we're not we're not delusional when we say that she saw this American Girl catalog and she screamed out, oh yeah. I, mean, she, I think there, there's gotta be, like, some sort of evil, like, color scientist working on, like, the color schemes and the fonts for these catalogs. There's something about them that are just immensely appealing. Yeah. But I've gotta say, I mean... It's it's exciting for me because I always wanted American Girl stuff and I never got I got like some books and some side items but I never got to have like the dolls or anything so I've honestly been waiting my entire life to start buying these dolls and I'm really going full steam in, into the collection. Uh, um, your daughters, thank you. I'm sure. I I hope so. I mean, I guess we'll reach a point where you know they'll either be into it or they won't. But so far, I've been into it. And, and she like started kissing it when it came out. Really? Well, because she had picked out she picked out a second baby that she wanted that she put on her wish list. There was a particular one. There's there's only like six models of the bitty baby. So there's just one that she has, and then there was this other one that she wanted. And so we got her that. And at first, I was a little bit worried that she wouldn't. That was a not. Like, when she first received it, she didn't seem like... She didn't have, like, a dramatic reaction. And then we didn't get it out of the box right away, because we had, like, a lot going on. And I think this is honestly a little overwhelming for her, because this may be the first Christmas she remembers. Mm -hmm. But when we did finally get it out of the box, she did. Like, she kissed it. Like, she was so she was so happy, and it's sleeping with her right now. Aww. And she named it Scarlet. Which was the original name of her original bitty baby before she changed his name to Lilac. Don't, don't throw but, away a good name like that. Just <laughs> oh, you just repurpose it just to another, it. another another baby. But I'm I'm excited for her. I think she, I think and but the bitty baby is something where that's like a quality toy, where even though, you know, it was a little more expensive than some other baby dolls. We've had other baby dolls that she does have some other cheaper baby dolls that she still plays with, but she also has some baby dolls that. I've, you know, quietly put in our closet and then thrown away and no one has noticed, you know, whereas this is a doll that, like, she loves this doll. She would notice if we quietly tried to put it in the closet. She would probably mm -hmm. get really upset. Plus, even if she didn't want it anymore, we could gift it or even, like, sell it to, like, another child. Mm -hmm. But I think that's, that's a big hit. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for when Lila can finally get one, too, because we're going to get to have the red-haired one for her. So, we've got, well, um, Emerald has already picked out the three that will be belonging to Emerald and the three that will belong to Lila. Right. Apparently Emerald wants a third one, but wow. she'll have to wait on that one. But anyway, um, so that I think is a big hit. And then I think another hit for her, the other big kind of present that we got her was this Playmobil horse set. I'm excited to get, I, we haven't set that up yet, but she was very happy. She hugged the box. She's very excited. Cause, I saw her hug it. it was really which, that was something where it's like, she didn't know that she wanted this, but I think it will be a lot of play for her. And I did pick this because going back to what you were saying about how I don't like character items. I wanted to, I feel like she's at a good age to sort of develop some interests and test out things to see if she's into them and to try to give her things that are like wholesome. Mm -hmm. Like this is like, you know, there's a lot of, like, girls and ladies that she can play with, and we know she likes playing with the girls and the ladies because she's always trying to take the ones from her brother's Playmobil set that he occasionally plays with. But it's, like, a wholesome interest. Like, there are, like, horses, and there's a barn, and there's cats and birds, and there's, like, you're shoveling the horse poop, and there's hay and stuff. So it's, like, a good, like... I'm trying to, like, kind of steer them towards more, like, solid, like, good character interests. I think the... Play poop has been an you know, unexpectedly sought after item. <laughs> yes, well, to to ex to explain a little more, we did an advent calendar leading up. Like they, she didn't know that the advent calendar was related to this present, but we did also do a Playmobil horse advent calendar for her this year. So she's gotten a few little horses and figurines and stuff that she's been playing with all month long. And there was a pile of poop that she got one day that I was worried that day. I was like, is she going to be really disappointed because? She was just getting this, like, pie. but she was actually delighted. She was so delighted, though, that we lost the poop because, like, she was, like, tossing it around and, like, laughing, and then I think it probably just went behind the stove. Or, like, yeah, who I was knows? just working so, at the table, and all I heard behind me was, oh, no, the poop. <laughs> and since then, it's literally disappeared I've in our house. I fear that I may have accidentally thrown it away because it probably just looked like a chunk of trash or something. We probably just, like, vacuumed it yeah. up one day or something. But anyway, 
I feel like, 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 kind of like with the Lego set. Like, there's a lot of Lego sets out there, but we want the space Lego set, because that's, like, a good interest, like, mm -hmm. to build. And uh, we went with the horse Playmobil set, because we feel like that's, like, a good thing to, like, see if she's into, you know? Mm -hmm. And then some gifts that other people got her that I think were big hits were... We, she got some more Calico Critter things. Mm -hmm. And the Calico Critters are another thing that's, like... Those, those, those critters are really expensive. Although, yes. I would say there's a mix of hits and misses with the Calico Critters in the sense that we did get her in her stocking some little, um, those surprise bags where it's like you don't know which critter you're getting. Mm -hmm. And today we opened them up and I was a little disappointed that we got, like, three of the exact same critter. Like, it's like... I feel like the, that whole store probably just got a flat of, like, the same creature. And I was a little, but I tried to, like, you know, lead by example and play it off as, like, it's exciting because we got, like, triplets. But the, well, I think our kids like getting multiples of the same thing. Yes, yeah, so it was okay. So I don't think it, like, necessarily is a loss for them when that happens. I personally was slightly... <laughs> no, I know. But, like, for example, like, one of our, like, the Frozen set that we got... That has a horse and Elsa in it, but she already has an Elsa. But the two Elsas were playing together in the set. But she told funny. me that there could never be too many Elsas. I mean, that's the other big hit for her this year. As we got closer to Christmas, I softened and put more Frozen items on her list because. Characters. Yes, I softened. That's why I'm saying I softened because I originally was not going to get any character items for anyone, and then. Her love of Frozen, like, she will listen to the soundtrack of both Frozen 1 and Frozen 2 back to back, and she will dance and sing and act out all the parts for all the characters for the entire thing, for the duration of the story. <laughs> but I won't. Like, she's, like, she's knocking on the door, and then she, like, runs to the other side of the room and is the person on the other side of the door. <laughs> and she does, like, her icy powers dance, like, it's just, it's hard for me to deny that. So, yeah, so, so, I, so I started out going strong. I was like, we're going for these non-character items. We're getting the horse set and the baby. Now and she's literally dressed as a character. And then we got the frozen dress. And then there were some more frozen people that came. And, and then we got a really good deal on the... It's the Elsa. She's kind of like a Barbie doll-sized Elsa that rides the water horse. I'm waiting for that to break any second now. But that's why I'm excited. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, it's not walking as well as it was earlier today. But it's... It's mobile, but it's, it's it's going real slow. I don't know if it's just because it's, against... I don't know if it's taking too much battery life or if it's just dying. <laughs> yeah. But I feel good about that still, though, as a hit because mo well, it's every store... twenty four hours away from Christmas. So. <laughs> let's, let's no, no, a little more time. But no. Let, let me explain it. why I feel good about that because I was not planning to buy that because it's usually like sixty fifty to sixty dollars. There was no way I would pay that much for that because it's not as open. I like open ended toys. Like this horse barn is very open ended because you've got the whole barn and the people and the animals, and there's like you could just play and play and play. The magnet tile is very open ended. You play and play and play. The Lego is open ended. That's the kind of stuff I generally like. This horse is not the kind of thing I like because, you know, you just she rides the horse and like I don't know what else you can do. As, well, but my hope, my thought is that perhaps if we get more of the Barbie doll-sized figurines from Frozen, like Anna and Kristoff and Olaf and all them, then she could play out, like, a whole scene. Now she just has, like, the girl and the horse. It's like there's not much to do. She's riding the horse, and then it's just sort of over. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I wasn't going to get that. And then there was this other larger horse that came out last year. It was, like, really big that I was tempted to get because last year it was, like, $50, and now it's come down to, like, 30 But I ultimately decided she probably wouldn't play with it enough, even though I wanted to get it because her – she has, like, a larger Elsa doll. Like, it's, like – is it – maybe not 18 inches. Is that, like, 15 inches? It's kind of a large yeah. – like, a chunky toddler size Elsa doll. Like, 10 inches. Maybe. Yeah. And that, there's a large horse that that one can ride, but then the review said that it doesn't really go, it won't stay on its back. And and then I watched some videos of it and it didn't seem very good. So we didn't get that. And then I thought, this one looks better. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't going to get this because I didn't feel like for the play value, the price was right. 
who we found like an incredible deal, like so incredible that I almost think that it might have been like the store had like an accident. <laughs> Because usually if one store has something priced down for sale, other stores will usually be having a similar sale at some point around the same time. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like if Target has one price, Walmart will have the same price. Or if Amazon has a sale, then you'll see the sale starting at Target. Just this random other store that we have in our area, for some reason, had the horse go on sale at a price that was like price to move. Mm hmm so we went for it, and I think that they've been enjoying it. Because we previously had that one really annoying toy that was just a random horse that you could wind up that would gallop around. Remember that thing? Oh, gosh. Yeah, that yeah. thing was horrible. Like, it was really annoying to me, but the children loved it. Ugh. And this is a similar thing in that they just they love watching, like, the horses galloping across the kitchen, and everyone's, like, following it and laughing and cheering. So, I mean, I think we're getting some value out of it for what yes. we paid, not for the I would not still have paid the original price. But anyway, so that's, I think, also a hit, and all the frozen things are a hit. And the Polly Pocket. She got a little tiny Polly Pocket, and how long did she play with that? In the gingerbread cookies. Yes, well, the ging I knew that she would like, but that's what I'm saying, Emerald loves everything. She's very positive. All right, let's, let's talk let's about... Let's talk about the, the worst the, the thing miss. that has happened to us this Christmas. It was, it was awful. It was... I, I was so, every time that I woke up last night, and I woke up a lot because I like, was waking up like every 45 minutes because there's a tooth that's like about to pop through. Mm -hmm. But... Every time I was, like, awake last night, I was, like, sitting there, like, feeling, like, ups I, you know when your child is so disappointed that you just, you feel devastated for them? Mm -hmm. So, when, op when having the kids open the presents, we tried to kind of line up somewhat equivalent presents for them to open, you know, because we open the presents one by one, person by person. And we tried to have them when it was their turn open, somewhat of an equivalent present to what the other person was opening up so that they could kind of feel equal as they went. You know, so like when Cab opened his big leg Lego set, Emerald then opened her on her next thing, she opened her big horses set. They're like both large, lots of pieces, similar type of items. So as we said before, Cap's first thing that he opened was Baby Yoda. So as her equivalent type item... We had Emerald open up another thing, which was the other item on her wish list. Because, like, Cap had the two things, Baby Yoda and a Lego set, on his wish list. And she had her bitty baby that she wanted and her dragon. Which I encouraged them to only wish for two things. Because I don't, I don't like the idea of it being this giant laundry list of items. And then do we decide to just be like, oh, whatever they put on this list, we have to somehow get all these things. Or do we decide, how do we decide which ones we're not getting them? So they can feel some sting of... You know what I I like the idea of keeping the, the their requests small as we can. Mm -hmm. But anyway, her other thing that she had asked for was this purple dragon. And it is not the kind of item that I would have bought normally. Like, I never would have thought to buy this if she hadn't somehow seen it. She saw it on... It's these catalogs that come to your house, man. She saw it on the Amazon catalog that came to our house and she wanted it. And I only decided to get it for her because it was an equivalent item to the Baby Yoda. The thing was, though, I had a good feeling about the Baby Yoda. And the Baby Yoda it turned out to be better than I hoped. Like, I had a good feeling it would probably be good because I watched some video reviews of it and everyone seemed to be liking it. And it, there weren't, like, a lot of reports of problems. And it looked decent quality and, like, based on... Cap's temperament, I had a good feeling he would like it and that it would work, and so far, so good, you know? I was more afraid about the dragon. It's mm -hmm. one of those for real friends, for people that are familiar with the, the world of animatronic children's toys. Yeah. But I was worried about it. I was more like it's a risk, but since I wanted something equivalent to what we were getting him, and since it, she expressed a great interest in it. She was like, I want the purple dragon. And she doesn't express a lot of interest in random toys. So I just thought, you know, yeah, we'll get her the purple dragon. So, mm -hmm. like, at about the same time I got the Yoda, I also ordered the dragon. And the dragon came. I tested it when it came, like, because I had to put batteries in it. I tested it, and it seemed like it was working. So I was relieved. Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot of reviews, though, and that's the other thing. Like, I read reviews. Like, I'll read a lot of reviews, and not just on one website. I'll read them on Amazon, but I'll read them on some other websites. And I will 
not trust reviews that come, you know, that you get, do like a company promotional to get, do the review and then you get the product. You know, I, I, I'm pretty careful and I do a good job, but this is a new product for Christmas. So there weren't almost any reviews out of this thing mm-hmm. when we ordered it. So I knew it was a gamble. I was afraid it might go badly, but it went so much worse than I had feared. It was as bad as you could have hoped for. Like, but I mean, I, do you want to set the scene of like Christmas? I think, I it's might, Christmas morning. I might cry. It's Christmas morning. This is like let's remind you. This is the first thing she opens because he opened his baby Yoda first. So then, and then it was he her does. turn. So she opens it. It's the purple dragon that she had seen and remembered. And this is probably the first Christmas that she's remembered. Like I don't think she remembers last Christmas no. even. So it's like it's all happening for her. We get the dragon out of its box. We turn it on. It flapped its wings like one time. And then its eyes turned red and it like folded its wings closed and like wouldn't come back to life. And it just like made some noises at her and like wouldn't do anything. And we tried, like we tried resetting it. We tried like taking the batteries out and putting them back in. I looked at like the instructions. And... She was, like, still trying to play with it, but you can't really do much with it if the wings are closed because a lot of it is, like, it has little hands that you're supposed to put things in and it has, like, a mouth. You're supposed to, like, feed it, like, a bottle and give it a pacifier. And you can't do those things because the wings, like, are flapped closed over, like, its face and its body. So basically there's nothing you can do Mm -hmm. other than, like, try to get it to open its wings. And it, like, clearly was, like, malfunctioning and not opening its wings. And she was still trying to play with it. And she was like, the dragon is not working. And then... This when she opened the... She tried to flap the wings open, yeah. and then she said, the dragon's not working because it's mad at me. Yeah. And then she just collapsed, like, she... But she didn't, like, have a fit. No. She was just, like... You know when someone's so sad that their just bones turn to jello and they just sort of droop over? She was, like, so sad that she yes. just, like... She just, like leaned into me and just kind of like drooped over with sadness yes it was terrible it was like it was really devastating it's like i would have paid the amount of money that you paid for that not to have that happen and that thing was like not cheap either i'm so angry i'm like i'm like still like really that's like the most upsetting thing but you said you read a bunch of reviews that like came in after after that happened like while the baby was napping like later in the day i like looked on amazon again to see the reviews but here's the interesting thing is that of course it's out of stock now (laughs) because i originally thought maybe ours was just bad and we can like trade it in it's Mm -hmm. out of stock now and now you can only get it from a third-party seller for like two (laughs) hundred (laughs) dollars But also I started reading reviews because now a bunch of reviews have started coming in and basically like a dis like same Christmas morning a bunch of like one star reviews came in that are basically like the dragon will not flap its wings. My child is devastated. (laughs) And it's like yeah I could have used these reviews previously but anyway I I feel like all of us kind of had the same experience with this but I just I feel I I'm still really upset when I think You said you might actually break your rule and and actually leave a negative Amazon review. I generally don't feel like it's worth my time. Because anything like that where you're leaving a product review, I always kind of feel like, who do you think you are that you need to, like, write a review? And, like, I feel like it's not worth my time to write a review. You know what I mean? Like, if I was paying myself by the hour. Yeah, you rely on reviews. But I only, I, okay. I have a lot of criticism for people who incorrectly review products, and I don't want to be that person. (laughs) But I might leave a review for this product because I have experienced the product and I'm very angry. You want to warn others before they have the same experience. I just get irritated when people review products where they say things like, the product didn't arrive on time, zero stars. Or, I purchased this for my grandnephew. I have not seen the product, but my niece reports that it arrived in good condition. They will be playing with it on Christmas, so I cannot report as to functionality. Five stars. You know what I mean? So that's why I get angry that people review things when they shouldn't. But this is a case where I think I will review it and be like, this toy made my child so sad. You should make a special video on your YouTube channel about it. Just to be like this, like, toy the, like the opposite of like a, the opposite of like a review or, uh, uh, like or a, like a sponsorship. <laughs> They're like this is the worst. But the thing is, fortunately, she's still sad about it because mm-hmm. I asked her like when I asked her this morning, I was like, "What was your favorite um, 
thing, what was your favorite pre- Christmas present? And she was like, my dragon, but it's not working. And I felt so bad. But other than that, she has recovered in the sense that she still had a good day yesterday. And oh, she yeah, loved she all her other play. presents, and she played yeah. and played, and all day long, too, she's been playing with her presents. Like, she played with, like, just, like I said, she'll go from thing to thing, and she played with, like, a million things today, and just, like, all day long having a good time. But I'm still, I'm personally devastated for her. Characters to the rescue, yeah. Characters, yeah, there's a lot of Frozen stuff here that's been getting a lot of play. Absolutely. And, okay, I guess another miss, this is a semi-miss for us. It's, I would say it's a semi-miss, and this is like a group miss. This is more like we got these things for the whole family, and so far we've not enjoyed them that much. But mm-hmm. in my fantasy life, we'll be enjoying these together in the future. Every year I get board games for our family, because I have this fantasy in my mind that we'll be playing them and having good times together as a family, because it seems like the kind of thing that families are supposed to do. And I have a lot of fond memories, although I guess it's from maybe from when I was slightly older than our kids are now, but I have a lot of fond memories of playing games. Like, when we're older, well. we Like, I always used to play games, like, when every, like, summer or sometimes for the holidays when I would visit my cousins, we would be playing games, like, everybody, like, that's, like, the, that's, like, our thing. Like, it's, like, you know, we eat and, like, whatever, and then it's, like, okay, what are we playing, you know? But... Playing games, in my experience, I don't know if it's all toddlers and young children or just ours, but it can be a strain sometimes. <laughs> but not, I mean, Emerald loves games. Yeah. I think you have to be willing to lose. But that's actually, okay, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day. We were texting about, because she also has a young child about the same age as Cap, and we were talking about the struggle of trying to play games with them. And I think I pinpointed why Emerald does better with games. It's that Emerald has sort of an athletic temperament Mm -hmm. in that, like, you know, when you see, like before I met Emerald, I didn't really understand, like, you know, when you see those commercials where, and I think I'm giving away here that I'm totally not a sports person. You know, when you see those commercials where it's like, for the love of the game, I never really understood that. Or, like, when you see people playing a sport and they, like, talk to themselves and they say things like, you got this so-and-so, or, like, oh, yeah. Like, I always kind of thought maybe people were taught to be that way and I never understood it. And I thought they were, like, maybe putting it on. But now that I know Emerald, I realize that that's actually a natural part of sports people's temperament. Because, like, Emerald, for example, like, tell the story about the time she face planted trying to get onto the slide. Yes, we were at a, um playground unfortunately it had the uh rubber tire ripped up you know like that the uh, insulation or whatever on the ground but it was a steep hill and you had to go up to the top of the hill it was like almost like a small rock wall that you would climb to get to the top of the slide hill yeah which was built into the side of the hill anyway she was trying to climb up the side and she just totally face planted i mean like it was bad and i was like oh man this is not good i would be i would be out of commission now if I you'd didn't. be like the day the day is ruined you have to and be like she just away. like oh she pushed herself off the ground and she picked herself up she wouldn't let me help her and she was like well no she one, screamed out no, no one, one can will, stop no one me. can stop me yeah. as she like ambled up the rock wall yes, to like slide to do back it down again. So but that's that like she's like her temperament you know yeah like she but but that's but that's what i figured out though while i was texting with my friend is that she has a sporting temperament in that, like, sure, she loves to win. I mean, everyone does. But winning isn't really the goal for her. For her, she loves to play. Like, playing the game is enjoyable to her. And so, like, she loves games. Like, she loves Candylands. She loves Don't Break the Ice. She loves games because her, just the act of playing is fun. Like, she plays to play the game. Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like Cap is more like he plays to win. And for him, the enjoyment is if he wins and the possibility of winning and anything else is not fun. And so that makes board games a challenge or in games of any kind. Mm-hmm. But I think for her, she just loves to play. So playing is really fun. But anyway, so I keep buying games for our family. And every time I buy more games and bring them home and we try to play them, I then promise myself I'm never going to buy more games. Mm. And then somehow I find myself buying more games. Yes, it always happens. So we acquired a couple more games this year. and But I'm optimistic that we might be able to make these games work after we... We need to just play them a few more times so everyone can get used to them and kind of work out the kinks of how we're going to be playing them. Mm-hmm. 
Totally. But anyway, so those are kind of, a, I would say, a semi-miss. Not really a huge miss, because like I said before, I already knew that games are a struggle for us, and I did this to myself anyway, mm-hmm. so. Well, I don't know if you had anything else for Emerald, but. Should we move on to the baby? Well, the one, if we're going to start with the hits for the baby, I feel like this is a hit for everyone. Mm-hmm. That piano thing. Oh, this, yeah. And see, I knew that this would be a hit. Um, and this was another thing that, you know, was given to her, to her, but it was something that I had picked out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the Baby Einstein. Well, it's a collaboration between, and I don't know if these companies are secretly owned by the same parent company or whatever, but anyway, it's it's Hape or Happer. I don't know how to say the name. It's like a wooden toy company mixed with Baby Einstein, which does, like, loud plastic musical toys. And so it's... It's like a little baby activity table, but it's just a flat, smooth top with sensors inside of the wood. And then one side is a piano, and then there's other instruments and, like, shapes and different things that they can, like, touch and hit and, like, play with. Mm -hmm. And so far, all the kids are, like, crazy about it. Like, I've had to tell the other kids to, like, back off to, like, let the baby get to it. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's she's been very excited about that, and she's really excited about that Peapod car. Oh yeah, that was another that was another gift that I had picked out. Um, and then we just got her. We didn't we didn't really go as crazy for her as far as the amount of gifts. Yeah. Um, I mean that that play table thing was probably her biggest gift, and then she really likes things that she can touch and feel. So there's a number of like rattly shaky and like ribbony soft like touching and feeling type of things Mm -hmm. um what would you say any other hits for her uh that tag thing yeah she got like another taggy blanket that she's liking we also got this other flat thing that she's not as into which is unfortunate because the flat thing was from like a more boutique type of place but i feel like a lot of those things like you kind of like you get you get sort of seduced by, like, the Instagrammable ability of certain items, but then, like, ultimately, children like the thing that's, like, more fun because it's, like, more colorful and, like, does more. Gaudy. Yes. <laughs> it's not the thing you want in the Instagram photo, but it is the thing that the child actually wants to play with sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes children like nice things. <laughs> <laughs> but, other, other people's children? <laughs> no, our children. Like, I'm saying, like, some of the other things that our kids like. Like, that play, that flat table thing is nice. I mean, it's brightly colored, but it's, like, still aesthetically pleasing. And, like, the calico critters, those are nice. Yeah. The magnet, the magnet tiles, those are nice. Mm-hmm. You know. But I guess, what is your takeaways from this year, and how will you apply it to next year? Because you said you start shopping for... Yes, I mean, because I already have, I mean, I have my master list mm-hmm. that I shop from this year, and so... There are some things on that list that I still might get our kids in the future. And there's ideas that I had after I was done shopping and didn't want to, like, spend more money that I just... Because I watched a lot of YouTube videos of, like, what we got our kids for Christmas. And I watched some of those after, you know, I was, like, I am done shopping. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did get ideas and put them onto my list. But So I guess my takeaway is... I think this affirms that I should trust my instincts in that... Like, the things that, like, the things that Cap likes are the things I knew he would like. And so I'm glad that I trusted. And those were all things that I instinctually, as soon as I thought about getting them, I was like, oh, we should really do this. So I'm, I think trusting my, my, that, like, first impulse as far as the things that I know he'll like. Because, I mean, I think that with, with him, I mean, as our oldest kid, we've ha- had him the longest I feel like I know him really well in certain ways and what he's into. And he's in the different phase of his life now where I feel like I more know what he is interested in. Mm -hmm. I think that the thing I might want to think about getting him though, and I did think about, I'm glad I didn't get him the LOL house that I thought about getting him, even though I know he would have liked that. That's another, oh my gosh, let's Let's talk about the LOLs for a second. Then we can dive back into the general, what we'll do next year. I am never, no, I'm done. I told you I'm done. LOLs I'm again. done with those pieces of junk. The trash. They're such garbage, and like I had to work so hard to get that little snow jacket on. You had to take off the head. No, you accidentally popped the head off while you were trying to get well, the jacket on. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> they should no. make it. Better. No, you had to split the arms, but I didn't realize at first that they That's... were supposed to split, and I thought I was breaking it, but then I realized it was how that jacket goes on. But the only reason I wanted so badly to put the jacket on is because the outfit that the LOL was wearing before you put the snow jacket on it was so incredibly inappropriate, and I pride myself in not being a prude, like. Mm-hmm. Like, because I know that there's been a whole backlash against LOLs, like, earlier this year, where a lot of people were like, we're so done with the LOLs and their inappropriate clothes or whatever. And I was kind of like, oh, whatever, people, you know, LOLs have always been inappropriate. Like, I was never under any illusion that the LOLs are appropriate. Like, I just kind of, you know, they, they're, they're terrible and they're very bad quality and they're hideous. But the children love them. And, okay. The reason that I was seduced into buying more LOLs this year is that they had a special holiday one and it came with a tiny holiday elf. Mm -hmm. And I love elves. And so do the children, Rob. Mm -hmm. And the elf was wearing a little snowsuit and it's like a companion for the larger LOL doll. And LOL has gotten better in that they've converted to using paper for more of their unboxing packaging. So it's better for the earth. Because that was the other thing people are against is the LOLs create a lot of trash. But now they've actually listened, and they're making more and more paper that you unbox, so it's better than the... So but, you can get to the trash inside. <laughs> but I'm done with them, because the out, the LOL was wearing such an inappropriate outfit that I felt offended. Like, like can you describe the outfit? It was like a fishnet bodysuit, but that's not strange <laughs> for an LOL doll, but like I just felt like the, it was wearing like a... I felt like a very inappropriate looking bra underneath the fishnets. And I just, it looked, it was too sexualized in a way that I was very creeped out by. And so I really wanted it to put the coat on, but the coat was really difficult to jam over the small plastic arms. I'm sure not by accident. But no, I'm, I'm not buying those. And they, I don't think that the kids, the kids do like them though. They play with them a lot, but I still don't think they're worth the money. Because we could get something else for that money that they would actually bring... Like, I like this horse set because, like, there are, like, appropriately dressed characters that can ride the horses beside the barn. They the don't appear to be sex workers. <laughs> they don't appear to be, like, yes. Yes. Not there's anything wrong with that. It's just not what I'm looking for in a gift for my three-year-old. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, so we're done with the LOLs. So I'm super glad that I resisted the urge to put, like, the LOL grandpa or anything on oh, the... no. You know that Emerald would have died for that, though. She would have been so excited. Yes, I'm sure. But yeah, no, I think LOL are not happening anymore. But, but going back to yeah. what, so what we'll do for him next year. So I'm glad that I resisted the urge to get him the LOL. There was like a, it looked like a shipping container and it came with like some guy LOLs and there was like a skateboard and like a video arcade. It looked super fun. The reviews were actually good because a lot of the reviews are like, these is not good qualities. But the, that particular LOL house had good reviews. Like, I think he would have liked that. Mm. However, I didn't get that. And what I do really want to get him, though, I wish that we had kind of done this, but maybe now that we know that he likes those Batmans, there is a big Batcave set mm. of those that's like, for the, the, it's, like, made for those figurines we got him, like, that size of, like, and that, like, brand. Mm -hmm. I do think something like that he probably would play with. I'll be watching him to see if he continues to play with those figurines going forward. If he continues, if he continues to play with those as much as he has shown enthusiasm initially, I do think he would like something like that, because he is super jealous of the Calico Critters house that Emerald has. And he keeps trying to put the Batmans into it, but I've been discouraging that because, I mean, like your impression of every time Emerald is playing and then he comes along, it's like, do, do, your, do your impression. Like, oh, hello, welcome to Beast Boutique, oh my god. Yeah, it's like she's always playing about, like, there's like a tea party or something yes. and people are putting on outfits and they're like arranging the food. And then suddenly he's like, but a snake has like come in the window and is breathing fire onto the... And yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that, but like... I want her to be able to feel that she can play more gently and not have it always have to be, like, a big disaster scene. Yeah, I think she plays along with his disaster ideas, though. She does, and that's time. and that's okay. Maybe that's just because he's the only other game in town right now. Well, it, I guess I'm thinking about it from the perspective as, like, since I was, like, the younger sister of, like, a boy, I feel like 
as a child, in some cases, I kind of got into my mind that, like, girly things were, like, sort of less than and, like, boy things were, like, cooler. And I don't ever want our girls to kind of get that idea in their heads. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's easy to get that idea when your older sibling is kind of, like, leading the way. So I just, I want her to be able to explore things that are interesting to her and not think that she has to play in a certain way unless she wants to, Mm -hmm. I guess. But anyway, so yeah, I think something like a more of like a house for his like superheroes could be like possibly for the future for him. Um, That's, I think what I would, what I'm thinking of for him in the future. And then I know he still wants a video game and I know he's not ready for it, but I, I kind of think it would be fun to play a video game someday. Um, for Emerald, actually, it's it's funny because normally I have an easier time shopping for her, I think, because she's a girl. And so, like, a lot of the toys that she likes look fun to me also. But this year, like I said, I had a much easier, I had an easier time than I'd had in years shopping for him. Because he's, like, at a stage where there's just more stuff he could be into. Mm-hmm. Whereas for her, I feel like three is an interesting age where it's kind of a shot. Like, she's changing, like... She's a toddler, and sometimes I forget how little she is because she's very sophisticated. Mm-hmm. Like, she's very articulate. She's very clever. She's dexterous. So I feel like she's, like, could keep up with, like, a five-year-old. But yeah. she is still a toddler in a lot of ways, and sometimes I forget that. So it's interesting shopping for her because, like, you don't want to buy toys that are too babyish that they won't play with, but then you don't want to buy things that are age-appropriately, like, too old for them. And so for her, I did a little bit of experimenting this year, like this horse set that she's liking, but it's something like, it's like she didn't know that this existed or know that she wanted it really before. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of trying to nurture interest for her. And like some other experimental things, we got her that little Polly Pocket. She liked that though. Oh yeah, she played with that for hours today. Mm -hmm. So I think that was probably a hit. We'll see how she, you know, whether she comes back to it Mm -hmm. more. But I think, like, that was a good hit. So, I mean, maybe more Polly Pocket things. More dolls. I mean, there can always be more dolls. She said that she could never have enough else's. We got her... This was not an experiment. We got a lot of Frozen stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, not an experiment. So, I mean, I assume that more Frozen stuff will be coming as her interest holds. And the one thing that I debated getting her or putting on the list for somebody else to get her and then didn't and slightly regretted it is like one of those welly wishers which is like it's an american girl but it's instead of being like the baby which i still would have gotten her the baby but there's like one that's more of like a little girl Mm -hmm. and she has seen that in the catalog and expressed interest in it Mm -hmm. so i've thought about getting that and then i thought oh i'll hold off and maybe get that another time but i'm on the fence about that too because Unlike the full-size American Girl dolls and unlike the Bitty Babies, some of the reviews for the Welly Wishers have mentioned some quality issues, and I don't want to buy an expensive doll and then have, like, its leg fall off. So I held off on that, but I almost wish we'd gotten that because I saw that you could get a snowboarding set with it where it, it rides the snowboard and it has, like, a helmet and stuff, and it was so cute, and, like, she would totally want her doll to snowboard. Nice. Like, you know that she would. Like, you can totally see Emerald doing that, right? Like, because you know how she's, like, so into, like, the idea of, like... She's never actually been ice skating, but she's very into the idea of ice skating. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, there's always more dolls that I could get her. And there are things that I've thought about for sporting-type equipment that I didn't get her because we're heading into Indiana winter, Mm -hmm. where there's not really going to be much outdoor sporting to be had. Like, we thought about getting a tricycle, but then we were like, she's not even going to be able to ride this for months. But... I might still pull the tricycle out for Easter or her birthday or something, because I think that could be so fun. Absolutely. What about... uh, I mean, the fun thing... I guess. There's there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to being the third child. Like, we have some basic toys already, and then we got her a few things that I think she'll be growing into and liking over the next couple months. At the same time, it's like... I feel like babies don't need as many toys. They need a few things, and they still just want to, like, run really fast to try to, like, pet the cat or something and, like, ignore all their toys. So most of, most, when I look at buying baby toys, I'm mostly thinking 
what will be engaging enough to her to sort of keep her in one place long enough that I can try to get things done around the house. And there's not that much that can, like, really fulfill that. You know what I mean? It's like, what could she play with while I'm trying to, like, use the bathroom or, like, put some rice into, like, the rice maker or something? Like, you know? Mm -hmm. But as she ages, I'm excited. I mean, it's harder in some way shopping for her because we do have some of the basics already. So it's not like we need certain things. Like, we already have those. But that's, I mean, that's nice that we have certain things. On the other hand, though it's an opportunity to experiment with things that we maybe didn't get previously, but we're like, oh, maybe this. Like, um, we never had one of these play tables before, like, for mm -hmm. either of the other kids. There's other styles of the same type. The idea of, like, a little table and the kid, there's some sort of activity that the kid will be excited by and play with. We never had one of those for the others. And now we have this one that she's going to be playing with, and then... We never had any sort of, like, a walker for the others, and I'm thinking maybe we'll get something like that for her for her birthday. I mean, we do have that, um, the radio flyer. It's like a little walker wagon. But that's, like, so heavy duty. And it's more, I feel like, more for more aesthetic than actual, like, children using it. Although, the children did really like that when um, Emerald would sit in it and Cab would push her around, and I was always so afraid that he would, like, crash into something and she would go flying through the air and be killed. And so I was really me just, like, anxiously being, like, slow down, and her, like, laughing hysterically while he, like, wheeled her around. So I assume that'll be happening more in the future with that thing. Yes. But for her, maybe more of one of the style, you know, the walkers. Not, I'm not talking about the thing that they sit in and they walk, because those are, like, not recommended. I mean, like, the thing where they hold it and they push it. But there are some really cute ones with little toys and stuff on the outside. Mm -hmm. So maybe something like that for her. I also thought about, um... And I, this is another thing I almost wish we'd gotten for Emerald, because she's still, I forgot that she's still a toddler, but she's totally the age range for this. There's a Fisher-Price thing that kind of looks like a Hot Wheel track, but it's more for a toddler, and it's like chunkier, it's called like Wheelies. And there's one that's like super popular this year, and I feel like Emerald would like dropping the little cars and like wheel around. I didn't get it because I feel like neither of our kids really play with the Hot Wheels anymore. Like, mm -hmm. barely at all. Like, they're mm -hmm. not... Like, Cap was so obsessed with cars, and he's, like, over them. And Emerald will occasionally play with the cars, but I feel like she's playing with them as though they're figurines. Like, she just has them talk to each other, mostly. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll all be driving somewhere and, like, have a parade. But I feel like they're more just acting as though they are characters, and they're not really, like, driving. Still... I wonder if she would like this, like, thing where you drop the cars in and you watch it, like, swirl around and go around the curves and on the track and stuff. So I had kind of, in my mind, marked that for possibly Lilac next year, but I almost wonder if that's something Emerald would like, like, sooner. Yeah. And then they could, like, both play with it. And you know Cap would play with it, too, if you saw them playing with it. In there. The reason I thought of it is because I pulled out of the closet something that we've had. It was actually a present for Cap's first Christmas. Mm -hmm. That toy, I don't know what it's called. You know, you drop the little block and then it goes down the chutes. Oh, yeah. And the big kids have been constantly playing with that and, like, fighting over it. Mm -hmm. And the car track is, like, a more exciting version of that that's more age-appropriate for an older child. Yeah. So that's why I thought of it. But anyway, so, yeah, maybe something like that for her, but I don't know. I mean, it'll be fun, like, to get her some more things that are for her personally because I feel like she doesn't really have any of, like, her own clothes or anything. <laughs> And I mean, not that she minds, and it's nice that we have those things for her that she needs, but it's like, people do like to have the feeling of owning some things that are specially just to them, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, what do you think? Like, what, what, is there anything that you, if you had had to do the shopping for them, instead of me doing it, like, what would you have gotten them? Probably more character things. Like say. what, though? I'm not against characters. But like, what, spe what character specifically do you feel like was underrepresented? I'm glad we're past Thomas. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done with Thomas. Although we do have that whole really nice wooden train set in the closet. I Although know. if we really want to get rid of Thomas, we should just get rid of that. Because otherwise Thomas is going to be like... I'm not... I'm, do, 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 yeah. do, do. I'm not trying to bring any more Thomas. Into yeah, life. no, no Thomas. No Paw Patrol. What character specifically... Like, like, let's say like you're a single man with these same children. What characters would you have brought home this Christmas? Probably a lot more Minnie Mouse. But as we've talked about before, the quality of the Minnie Mouse items is just so low. Like, I want to get Emerald the Minnie Mouse. Still, I feel like the, the Christmas morning feeling that you're talking about 
if you saw some Minnie Mouse under their tree. You know what, though? We did get one Minnie Mouse thing for Lilac. We got that that green toy stacker with Minnie Mouse's head. And oh, yeah. that is, both her and Emerald have been playing with that a lot. Yeah. Like, they both like that. But yeah, so more Minnie Mouse. What else? Uh, probably for Cap, I would say probably, if I was a single man, I probably would have let him watch Star Wars by now. <laughs> mistakenly i'm sure it would have like led to some lightsabering but um yeah i feel like probably more star wars stuff it's interesting though because i always feel like when i'm shopping and i show you stuff i always feel like you're like against like not that you're like harder on him but like i feel like whenever i show you stuff that would be super fun but like lead to bad behavior you're always like no don't get that because, like, I feel like I showed you some Star Wars action figures, and you were like, don't get those. <laughs> yeah, it's possible that I might have said that, but... But still, in theory, and, like, what what would you have gotten for the baby? Probably some more, like, nondescript... I'm, it, babies are hard to shop for. I probably wouldn't... Because they don't really... They've not expressed... Other than... Lilac has expressed an interest in touching and feeling things. She likes texture. But other yeah. than that, she hasn't really... Exp- She's yet to express extreme interest. Probably some more of those tag type things, probably. Yeah. I don't know. She like, I I understand what her obsession with, with those fabric pieces. So I think probably more of those. More just more things to feel. I mean, yeah. we did get her two of those, but just more sensory. Yeah. Ones, yeah. Well, I think I think I would like to order her. I guess I also felt less pressure in some way shopping for her because I feel more pressure with the older kids in that I like to spoil them for holidays, but I don't like to get them a lot of presents randomly at other times. So in some ways I feel pressure with them to get all the things that I want them to have. For Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like, because the, their birthdays are spread out pretty well halfway through the year from Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like a pressure of, like, between Christmas and their birthday, I feel like I want to get the bulk of everything that I want them to have for, like, the whole year. Because mm-hmm. I don't... Like, we might buy them some small things, and, like, I tend to, like, every once in a while I'll buy them, like, books and stuff. But we don't really buy them, like, big toys mm-hmm. other times of the year. So I feel sort of like we want to get all that stuff in because it's like Christmas. And to me, I feel like it's okay to spoil them for Christmas, but I feel like it would be too spoiling to just randomly buy expensive toys at other times somehow. I don't know why that's just in my mind how it works. But you want to like save the excitement up for Christmas too. I mean... Exactly. But with the baby, I feel more of a license to like less pressure to get all of her stuff for Christmas. Because I feel like I could just sort of randomly buy her something from Amazon if I feel like she needs it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Also because she's so changing. Like, I feel like with a six-year-old and a three-year-old, they're growing and changing, of course, through the year. But they're basically, we kind of know where they're at and where they're going. Mm-hmm. With her, like, the things that she needs now as, like, a almost eight-month-old... She's going to even be into different stuff in a couple months when she's, like, one. Mm -hmm. And then when she's, like, 18 months, that's, like, a whole other category of, like, items that she could want to play with. Yeah. So I feel more licensed and relaxed with her to just kind of think, okay, like, we got a few things for her that she likes now and maybe a few toys that I think she'll grow into over the next couple months. But she'll get a couple more things when her birthday comes this spring. And then if we think we need something else for her, I'll probably just go ahead and get it. Like, mm-hmm. I probably will just go ahead and order her some more touch and feel books. Because I know she really likes those. Mm-hmm. Or, like, if we feel like she really wants another taggy blanket, like, we could just buy that. Yeah. I don't know, that's difficult. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, that's pretty much all I... Had. Is there anything else you had for gifts that you wanted to talk about? I don't know. I mean, did you want to talk any more about, like, general ways of shopping? Or, I mean, I think we covered a lot of, like, yeah, I think how we people shop. Your philosophies. And, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I ever really pinned down my philosophy. Maybe because my philosophy is still evolving. And I think every year we do things a little bit differently depending on our circumstances. Like, I think we did 
slightly more this year than we did last year. Mm-hmm. Like, per child, as far as just, like, how many gifts they had and what we spent. But, like we said, I mean, it felt maybe like this year it was more called for. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But, well, thank you for being on the Rob Burgess Show. I guess. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. Happy holidays to you. Oh, oh. Uh, tell people to watch your YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anyone wants to see, like, the bulk of, like, all the stuff that we personally got our kids, I didn't go into, like, the gifts that we you know, told other people to get. But mm-hmm. if you want to see the things that we personally got the kids, you should watch my YouTube video because it's it's always my most popular videos of the year, my gift guide videos. And that's actually what I think I want to lean my channel more towards is doing gift guides. Um, people like them. But one of my more recent videos that I have up there right now is I have one that's all about what we got them. And I have another video that's like what we did for stocking stuffers because we didn't even talk about stocking stuffers really here other than we mentioned angrily the LOLs. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you should watch my YouTube channel. It's just Ash Burgess, just my name, so it's easy to find. Mm-hmm. If you Google it, you will have to filter through some things. So I think there's one other Ash Burgess that maybe has written a few songs or something. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes Google tries to autocorrect to Asperger's. But as long <laughs> as you can get past that... Uh, oh, no. My channel name is just Ash Burgess, so it's like okay. easy to find, easy to remember. And... You gotta fix your search engine optimization. <laughs> but I, less so now, I think more than as I've had some popular videos, I'm more findable now. Absolutely. And I make videos, like I said, I'm leaning more towards gift guides. I would say I'm a mommy YouTuber, except that I'm trying to lean more, like, I'm not as interested in doing content that features our kids as I am in doing content where I talk about like products and things and ways of doing things like and more my experience as a mom so I'm trying to do it like sort of an ethical take on that like world you know as more and more backlash comes upon the family vlogging channels <laughs> which is a whole other video that we can do sometimes Absolutely. but but anyway yeah people should definitely check out my channel definitely. and like and yeah, subscribe definitely like and subscribe always anyways, always but don't comment <laughs> comments may be turned off so com- comment or not depending on whether you can yes absolutely uh, but yeah yeah well thanks for having me on here again let me know where to find me I do <laughs> <laughs>
Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, RSS, and now Spotify. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. If you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to therobburgessshow at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Also, if you want to call or text the show for any reason, the number is 317-674-3547. Until next time.